Welcome to another exciting episode of Cars with Big Boy Trev. I am Big Boy Trev. My name is Mirigi. And today we have an amazing show. I went all the way to Abu Dhabi for Formula One. And of course, we're going to sample something interesting for Mazda. Which one is it? The Mazda CX-9. But first things first, let's check out the news. So today we have a lot of interesting stuff on the news, but I cannot start this episode without asking Trev, how was Abu Dhabi? Abu Dhabi was awesome, my guy. You guy. Let me tell you something. <laughs> if you've never experienced Formula One, Abu Dhabi is a place to be. Now, I went courtesy of McLaren. And you know McLaren is the second best team in Formula One when it comes to history and heritage. Ayton Senna, Lewis Hamilton, Alonso, all these guys who are part and parcel of Formula One and they were driving McLaren cars. So we had an amazing time, had access to the paddock, had to go and see the garage and you know, had a chance to see how the technicians work on the tire, on the cars, change the tires and things like that. Look at like telemetry. Let me tell you, those cars give the pit real time information on the go as the guys go around the track. So you can imagine working on a different torque levels, gearbox, things like that. That was so fascinating because personally, I'm an F1 fan. So I had an amazing time. Thanks so much, McLaren and partners, for giving me the opportunity to visit Abu Dhabi. And I'd urge you next time, a CBBT will organize for you to go to one of the Formula One races next year. Actually, the season now has ended. Yeah. And Lewis Hamilton is obviously the winner. And of course, the new season starts in March in Australia. So hopefully, We'll get our act together, make sure that some of you will go and have a chance and have a Formula One race. But before I even finish about Formula One, I have an interesting thing. I have a gift for you. So, I um, actually got a signed uh, poster of the McLaren driver. That is Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris over here. Fully signed and that is for CBBT. Yeah, we won. Thank you very much. And now I have a signed cap that I am willing to give. I'm going to ask you one question. When was McLaren started? McLaren Formula One team. When was it started? Send your thoughts as seen on social media handles below and we'll get back to you on the winner of this branded original cup courtesy of McLaren. So moving on to the world of Mercedes-Benz, the Mercedes S-Class. Mr. Mirigi, we were at Mercedes Museum. You saw the Mercedes <laughs> S-Class. The history. I yes. mean, this is just the best thing that, the best or nothing is basically what they keep saying. And the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, the current version, has just hit a production target of 500,000 units, which means obviously now the luxury sedan market is still in play. People are still buying large luxury sedans. Trevor, why do you think people are still buying the S-Class? Listen, the S-Class means Sonderklass in German. Yeah. Sonderklass means special. And the S-Class, as you know, the history, as we mentioned in our earlier preview in the museum, is that Mercedes used this car as a template to run all the technologies that will trickle down to all the vehicles in 10 years, in a decade. Every time Mercedes releases a new S-Class, it's 10 years period. And you can imagine all the new things are now trickling down to the rest of the hard rest, everyone else. So obviously the S-Class has a lot of uh, a good quality. Build quality is fantastic. The quietness. They even say it's quieter than a business class seat on an A380. So the perennial rivals of the Mercedes S-Class include the BMW 7 Series, which is an amazing car, big grill, Audi A8, and of course the Lexus. LS, which is also an amazing vehicle. You cannot forget, of course, the Porsche Panamera, which is a later entrant into this market. Absolutely. But this large luxury sedan market is not going anywhere. I'm telling you, things like, you know, heated seats, heated and cooling seats, massage function, you guy, scented air, you got mood lighting. All this stuff are now in this particular class. So you can imagine, if you want to visit and see one of these cars, you can visit DTW or Inchcape. They'll give you a sneak peek of the 7 Series and the Mercedes S-Class. So guys, Jaguar have just announced yesterday that they've launched the brand new 2021 F-Type sports car. Their premium sports car that is going to take to effect and get into a market by 2021. And I can tell you for a fact, we've tested it on Cars Big Boy Tev. It's coming one of... Uh, the episode is coming soon, but Mr. Mirigi, who are the key rivals of this particular car? Well, I mean, it's a two-door sports car, which yes. is a shrinking market at the moment. It's luxury by virtue of the fact that it is not utility. We are looking, of course, at the Porsche 911 and... Mustang. Uh -huh. And then also in terms of power, the power units still remain the same with slight improvement, starting with the 5-liter V8 supercharged that produces 575 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque from a petrol engine. 0 to 100, 3.5 seconds, top speed, 300 kilometers an hour. That is just insane 
amount of power. And of course, you also have the entry level, the three liter. From a two liter engineer engine, you do have about 300 horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque, all paired with an eight speed automatic with an option of all wheel drive or rear wheel drive. We can't wait for Inchcape to give us this car and sample it. And of course, cars will be by Trev will be the first. On the ground with that vehicle, Absolutely. definitely, to let you guys know what it has to offer, how much it costs, and whether you should get one. It's a season to be merry. La 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 la. As Christmas is coming in, we at CBBT have to let you know about some of the offers that the car dealers are having. And we have with us right now here the brand new Suzuki Alto K10, which is of course now an improvement on the Uber Chap Chap that you're used to. But they still have the old ones here available. These are now going for 650,000 shillings, all inclusive, including three services. But Trevor, yes. is there anything else CMC has for the holiday? Of course, if you have any brands that are in the CMC family, so from Ford, Suzuki, Mazda, HR, Renault, you have 20% off on all parts and service. Please rush to CMC, get yourself your car service to get your parts bought because, you know, January, things get really, really tough and CMC cares for you. In, let's see how this dash of the Mazda, or commonly referred to as Mazuda in Japan, is all about. All you can see is a typical European design. If I was to actually close this logo or hide it, what did you think? Probably look like an Audi or a BMW. And that is how Mazda has improved its game consistently, trying to make sure that these cars now have that European appeal. Standing out from the crowd from your traditional uh, Japanese brands and now offering a better value, better quality, better design, courtesy of the Kodo philosophy which Mazda has employed. Now, let's start with the center console as always. As you can see here, this is an 11 inch display that is multi color and houses navigation that works in Kenya, both navigation that works. So you don't need to get lost. And of course, you do have a sampling audio system that I will play shortly. So that sound is courtesy of a 12 speaker Bose audio system with 295 watts. That is a raw power. The multimedia interface system that's found on the CX9. I can tell you, Mazda have done a lot. They've really actually tried to incorporate a few things that are found on Google and their own system to make sure that it is as helpful as possible. What is of keen interest to me is the navigation aspect. It actually works in Kenya. And if, for example, I want to do a road trip to South Africa, so these particular maps can actually support me in Lesotho, Mozambique, Namibia, Reunion, South Africa, Swaziland, Tunisia, and Zimbabwe. If I'm looking for help and I've just gone for a road trip and I need, say, a car, a, a health, I'm not feeling too well, I have a stomach, I need to go to a, to a hospital. I press health and it will quickly scan around and the nearest part to me is Mid Hill Medical Clinic in Kajado, Ngong, which is exactly two kilometers and the direction is north, northeast. That is how good it is. If I need a doctor on standby, I have Dr. E.K. Thuo Clinic, Kajado, Ngong. So if, doctor, if you're seeing it, please buy this particular car. So guys, at the gearbox, as you can see here, you do have uh, quite a number of buttons and obviously you have your traditional gear shift knob which is tiptronic you can actually toggle through the different uh, modes of the gearbox and of course you do have some power settings you have sport and comfort so you flick down if you're driving on the traffic it's on comfort mode so the car behaves very well the gearbox uh, selects higher gears for higher efficiency but of course if you want to more power you actually can switch to sport and then you can feel the might of the Mazda CX-9 on the highway obviously you do have here the navigation system this is a multimedia interface which actually looks like a bmw sort of design so you do have uh, a knob that allows you to control certain functions on the on the screen and of course um home 
and music and radio and of course you have an electronic pack break no more you know pulling up like this it's like all electronic now to the instrument being called white is most important why i love very much now clear and precise uh, writing as you can see here in the middle you do have a high crisp resolution display that actually is digital and allows you to see certain aspects of the cars critical aspects including what the car is doing if the doors are open um temperature settings and of course on the left you have a tachometer which revs all the way to 8000 rpm and of course on the right you do have battery uh, temperature oil level and fuel all that is very very important and of course in the middle you also have uh, one of the things that are very important which is the safety component here you have active uh, cruise control you do have lane departure assist it will tell you and of course over here you can also relay all this information to the heads up display that allows you to you know concentrate on the road without taking your eyes off it so it will reflect whatever is here onto the screen without taking your eyes off and you're able to know what speed you're running what radio station is playing navigation of course and so many other things that are very intricate when it comes to giving vital information to the driver that said we need to go to the back and find out whether mr Murigi is comfortable and if this car is practical for the kenyan family So the Mazda CX-9 is not just fun to drive, it's fun to be driven in. And that's why I'm over here in the back left. These spectacular Napa leather seats, they are very comfortable. And for the first in this segment, they actually are cooled seats in the back over here. You actually also have three zone climate control. So at the back here, you can set your own AC and you should be fine. Lots of space to put stuff in this car. If you can't fit your stuff inside this car, you're carrying too much. There's space at the back here, there's space in the door bins and there are additional two cup holders over here as well as an additional storage space that has two usbs in addition to all of this these seats are actually adjustable you can actually move to the front to the back just to adjust how much space that you feel like and as a ceo you don't want to be seen look at this there's a shade it's like you're in a mercedes the theme here is excellence it's takumi attention to detail and the cx9 is not playing when it comes to that let's go to the back and see how much space it has There is so much space in the back of the Mazda CX-9 that if you run out of places to put things, you are carrying too much stuff. The boot is massive and inside the car, there are 10 cup holders for drinks that when you're on a long trip, lots of small places for you to put stuff to make this a very, very practical car. Under here, we have the spare tire and the subwoofer for the Bose surround sound system. And you must not forget that the Mazda CX-9 is actually a seven seater. So there are two seats here that you can just pull up and these seats are big enough for an adult. We're going to do a test and show you that. But before we do that, let's get on the road and see what this has to offer as a driving experience. This week on Cars with Big Boy Trev maintenance segment, we tackle air filters. The air filter is a critical component of the combustion process and your car's performance depends on how clean or dirty it is. The air filter element is a sieve strategically placed at the air inlet port that cleans the air coming in from the outside of the car to be used for combustion in the engine. Air filters are made up of either paper, polyester or other absorbent material that filters dust particles, moisture and other foreign debris that may cause damage to the engine. The element is placed within a sealed pod that allows the atmospheric pressure to be accurately measured by the mass airflow sensor, as well as providing equilibrium between the inlet and outlet manifolds. Every time you switch on your vehicle, a huge volume of air is continuously sucked into the engine, and the filter's work is to ensure that only the clean, free air is allowed in for effective combustion to take place. Whenever the engine is running, the air filter is removing and collecting foreign materials from the intake air. These foreign materials will eventually accumulate to the point that they will clog the air filter and a replacement will be necessary. A clogged air filter affects engine performance and can increase fuel consumption, as well as contributing to engine oil contamination. This leads to hard starts in the morning, mass air flow sensor failure, and so much more. Most vehicle manufacturers recommend that one should replace their air filter after every 10,000 kilometers or six months. However, in Kenya, this period is half 
by to 5,000 kilometers or three months due to the dusty roads and harsh conditions. For those driving high performance vehicles, you may use a cold air intake filter that is washable and can last a lifetime. These are quite pricey compared to the standard air filter elements, but the special materials in those filters ensure that only clean air is sucked in for the combustion process. Always try to purchase genuine air filter elements from reputable shops or the vehicle's authorized dealer as original replacement parts are built to withstand our harsh conditions. So guys, I am driving this CX-9 Mazda on one of our bypasses and I can tell it's an amazing experience. You know, this particular car is punching above its weight, I can tell you for a fact. It is designed to compete with the likes of the Porsche Cayenne, believe it or not, the BMW X5, the Audi Q7 and many other cars that are just above its class. What Mazda has done, improve the quality, give you a car with a serious coded design, very fluidic design, and of course, merging with Sky Active technologies. Now, Sky Active is an acronym that Mazda uses for efficient yet powerful engines that has full driver engagement. And we are right here on the bypass, just trying to see what this car can do. So, let's start with the power. Number one, it's a four cylinder turbo petrol, 2.5 liter, producing 170 kilowatts and 420 in terms of torque, enough to do this. As it pulls, listen, I'm quickly doing 5,000 RPM and doing 140 kilometers an hour. And the six-speed automatic, not CVT, allows me to explore the full potential of this particular car. And it is matched to an all-wheel drive system that distributes torque to the four wheels depending on the need and the basis of traction, which is very important, both on and off-road. Now, Sky Active technology, one, cylinder shut off. So when you're driving in traffic, like now we just got into a patch of traffic, it shuts off two cylinders. So it means you have better fuel efficiency. In fact, on average, it does 8.8 .8 liters per 100 kilometers, which is not too bad for such a bulky car. Again, in terms of power and performance, very important. Sky Active has quite a number of acronyms. There's something called G-Force Vectoring. Now, G-Force Vectoring basically allows the car to redistribute torque based on the weight distribution of the vehicle. So if you're driving fast on a corner, the vehicle will sense through the gyroscopic sensors around the vehicle that this car, the weight is moving towards the front. Now, to ensure that there's enough balance, the system will selectively break the rear wheels to ensure that you remain stable even on a sharp curve. And in case, in case all hell breaks loose, then you can rely on the active brake force distribution and torque vectoring by braking. So if you're running out of talent on a corner, then the brake system will actually try and see if you're able to correct the situation and get you back on track as you drive the Mazda. You do have your traditional cruise control. Now with an added layer of active cruise control which uses a radar-based system to calculate the distance between the car in front of you and yourself and you're able to maintain a certain speed. Apart from that, you also have uh, lane departure warning which warns you if you're straying away from a lane so it has stereoscopic cameras over here you do have cross traffic alert when you're reversing out of a parking and the car is coming it will sense and will stop immediately and of course you do have emergency autonomous braking during traffic so that if you don't react by braking and there's an obstacle in front of you the car will automatically brake to ensure that you remain safe on the road you do also have Crumple zones around and eight airbags are standard. Um, and then you do have obvious safety belt. Very important. The key component for safety in every car. I'm gonna find out if the CX9 is capable off-road, just like a Volkswagen Touareg or a X5 or a Porsche Cayenne. So we will take us through that session and we'll give you the lowdown on how the all-wheel system of this car works in conjunction with the suspension.
we are off the road in the Mazda CX-9. This is not what this was built for. This is supposed to be built for tarmac. That's where this car is supposed to show its stuff. And like Trevor showed you, it really handles really, really well. But once you get off the road, it's important to note that this does not have off-road modes. Although I have to say so far, it hasn't needed any of them. This is an all-wheel drive. All four wheels are driven. It has very good ground clearance. And this suspension is actually pretty good once the road ends. You're seeing right now, it's been able to hack a lot of the stuff that we are doing over here on Gong Hills. It's been raining, so there's a lot of mud. This has actually been able to get over and above the mud. I honestly believe that if you have good tires in this car, there is nowhere you shouldn't be able to go. Ground clearance is spectacular. So let me just kick it off the road a bit. Let's make a turn. And as you can see, very easy to drive this car. Put the power down. And yes, one of the advantages of what they've done with this engine is that the power is available very low in the rev ranges. This is also very important when you're off the road. So on the road, this thing is spectacular. Off the road, it handles its business. But let's see how it stacks up against the competition. Let's go to Valley for Money. So guys, we've just sampled the CX-9 both on and off road and I can tell you for a fact, Mazda ain't playing. Mr. Murigi, what are your thoughts on the CX-9? I mean, this thing, it's fun to drive and it's comfortable to be driven in. What I love about this car is the fact that there are no compromises. It gets nothing wrong. It does everything very well. It's fantastic to drive. It's comfortable to be in. It has loads of space. It has lots of technology. And at this price, why would you think about something else? It's, it's Honestly, it doesn't make any sense for them to be selling this thing at this price. Now, how much is it? It starts at 7.5 million shillings for the top spec edition, which you have over here. And you have to remember, we are talking Napa leather, open pour wood, seven seats, an incredible, amazing engine. I couldn't believe that yes. that 2.5 liter has that much power. Yes. So 7.5 million shillings at CMC, three year warranty, 100,000 km. And also remember this particular car plays in a certain segment. But the likes of the BMW X5, the Porsche Cayenne, and many others continue to fight. This car is absolute value for money. I don't Cap know what Visa, to say. Cap I have Visa. tried to look for mistakes. <laughs> there are none. Maybe a bigger engine, but this day's size does not matter. No, no, no. Know no what no, I mean? No. Not at all. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on Cars with Big Boy Trevor. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or queries, don't forget to hit us up as seen on the social media handles below. And we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Signing out, this is Big Boy Trev. This is Mirigi. Drive safe. And be safe.